What's up guys? Welcome back. So a couple of years ago, I tried to make some tires out of ice for my Rustler. The idea was that it would slide like it was on ice and so it would drift like crazy. Unfortunately though, ice is really weak and so the tires just exploded right away. Well, today I'm going to be trying it again, and this time I'm going to do it a lot better. I'm going to make the tires way thicker, I'm going to mold them better, and I'm also going to make them out of some stronger ice. And so hopefully they'll hold together. Now if you want to skip the process of making these things and just watch them in action, then you can skip to the timestamp right here, but otherwise let's get into it. Now I'm going to use the same wheels as I did last time, just so I don't have to 3D print new ones, but I'm going to make the tires way thicker. They're going to be about the size of this wheel here, and so you can see that should give us some pretty thick ice. And the reason for that is that on the last one, it was just super thin in the edges here, and I think that's part of why it failed. Now last time, I 3D printed the molds for these, but unfortunately my 3D printer is not big enough to print a mold for this. So instead, I'm just going to make one out of this homemade Play-Doh stuff here that I've made. And I'll put a link to the recipe for that down in the description. So my thinking is I'll just wrap this tire in tin foil, and I'll just sort of build a ring around it out of the Play-Doh. And since I don't have the tin foil on it, I should be able to just take it out really easily, and that should leave a good mold. Let's see if that's enough. Oh, that's about perfect. Now you can see the mold does have some imperfections at the bottom, but we can just cut those off. I think I'll maybe add some buttresses to the side just so then it doesn't uh, collapse. So next we just need to put this in and then we can fill it up. Now this was really easy to do on the 3D printed ones because it was super precise because it was all 3D printed. But with this one, I got to do it all by hand. So I made this thing out of wood here and it should keep the wheel perfectly centered. And I got to add a little bit of water to the bottom just so that it freezes and hopefully makes this a good watertight seal for the rest of this. So while it's freezing, I'm gonna mix up the ice. Now last time, I just used regular ice and it was nowhere near strong enough. So this time, I'm gonna use something called Picrete. Picrete is made by just mixing up some newspaper or sawdust with water and then freezing it. And it is ridiculously strong. But yeah, so I've got this blender and I've got some newspaper so we can make it up. Now the recipe calls for 86% water, 14% paper by weight, but that is actually a pretty ridiculous amount of paper. And once I get close to that, the mixture just gets so dry that the blender can't properly mix it. So I'm just going to try and get as close as possible and it should turn out pretty good. So yeah, let's do it. Give it one last quick mix and we'll pour it on in. As you can see, it's pretty thick. It doesn't really pour like water. So yeah, it's really chunky. And yeah, this is not going to be nearly enough. We're going to need to make another batch. All right, so the first tire is all frozen, and here it is. Now you can see it's a little bit rough on the top, but it should be smoother everywhere else with this Play-Doh. So yeah, let's get the mold off and check it out. It's a good start. Got a layer of Play-Doh and regular ice on the bottom from that seal. Let's try and scrape a bit more of this Play-Doh off. And I'll put it back in the freezer just to make sure it stays frozen. All right, so I did a ton of sanding and cleaning up on the tire, and I refroze it, and here it is. Now you can see it did clean up pretty nicely. It's a lot more circular than it was before, but it does have a lot of warps and weird bumps. It's not really perfectly circular like you'd want in a tire. And I think the Play-Doh might have just been too soft and sort of warped a bunch. So for the next one, I might maybe leave in the tinfoil or something like that just to try and get it to keep its shape better. All right, so since that last clip, I've been doing a ton of experimenting with different designs for the mold, and I have settled on this one right here. So what this is, is I took a sheet of that acrylic plexiglass stuff, and I used a heat gun to mold it around the tire here. So now I've got this pretty good circle shape. Now it definitely isn't perfect, you can see there's some imperfections in it, but I think it's generally better than the Play-Doh one. And since it's rigid, it hopefully won't deform. Plus it's clear, which might be kind of cool to see. So yeah, let's get this thing set up. So first I'm just going to use a little bit of duct tape to make sure it stays the right size. Remove the tire, then we'll just screw in the new wheel into our uh, centering piece. And actually, we could probably get rid of this little gap here if I got a second piece of plexiglass and just drill a hole in it for that. And I use a little bit of Play-Doh just to hold everything where it is and keep it watertight. All right, I think that's good. Yeah, so I'll just give it its first thin layer of ice on the bottom just to seal everything up, and then we can start adding the picrete. All right, so I've got the acrylic mold all frozen up to make a watertight seal. I got some picrete, and I've also got some nonstick spray this time, and I'm hoping that that'll make it a little bit easier to remove. So yeah, let's go put it in. Like the consistency of a smoothie and it's slightly warm. All right, yeah, let's get that further. All right, so here's the tire. I've added a couple more picrete layers off camera and I think it's ready. Now, if that nonstick spray did its job, then hopefully this will be pretty easy, but only one way to find out. Oh my goodness. Look at that, right off. I guess the bottom bit we gotta unscrew first. 
Yeah, that looks pretty nice. Definitely a lot smoother around the outside than the uh, Play-Doh mold one, and less greasy as well. Now, I don't think it's quite perfect. You can see there's some little bulges here and there, but this is definitely a lot better than the Play-Doh mold. I think this is a good usable tire. So yeah, that's one tire done. I put it back in my freezer just so it wouldn't melt. So I will do the other three off camera, and I'll see you guys back when I'm done. All right, so the ice tires are all ready, and so now we can take this thing out. On the Rustler, I don't have the tires on yet, just because I don't want them to melt, but I've got the 12 milliliter hexes so that we can run them, and I've got this thing so that we can run the car on 3S. I think 3S is going to be better than 6S, just because we won't tear up the plastic wheels, and I think that having the wheels spin slower will let us control the car a little bit. But yeah, let's get out and give it a test. All right, we got our tires. I don't have the shell on because they're a bit too big. They run into it. So yeah, it works out. Oh wow, it actually does drift. Oh no. Ah, uh, well the wheel broke. Um, I have a spare though. Let me swap that out. All right, we've got a spare wheel. It's not as good as the rest, but it should work. Regular tires front might make more sense because then it can turn. Nice. I think I may have lost front wheel drive. It always feels like it, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I definitely lost front wheel. What the heck? That's weird. It's sort of doing it. We got one wheel drive. So there it is, some ice drift tires for the Russell 4 x 4 This is a really good start. You may remember that the original ice tires only lasted about three seconds before they exploded. But these ones, I used them for several minutes and they still look pretty much brand new. Obviously they're not perfect, but it is definitely a pretty big improvement over the originals. Yeah, I'd say really the biggest issue with these was the weight. I really did not realize just how heavy these things were gonna be until I actually put them on the car. These little 12 millimeter hexes really did not stand a chance. And I only ran the car on 3S this time, just because I thought that would keep it from breaking stuff. But there are actually times where the car was struggling to spin these. So yeah, for version 3, we'll give these things some 17mm hexes, and we'll run the car on 6S. The other issue I was running into was traction. Now obviously the whole point of drift tires is that you don't have very much traction, but you do still need a little bit just so you can get the car moving and then have some control. And these ice tires really do not have enough. So I don't know, maybe next time I'll give them some grooves or studs or something. All in all though, this is definitely pretty good for a second attempt. Unfortunately though, that is about it for today's video. Thank you all very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed, and of course subscribe if you want to see more of this, and I will see you all next time.